Right, well, I'm John Cannell of Bellican Inn. The John Cannell, from John Cannell, John Cannell, John Cannell, going back for very many generations. We reckon we've been here for 30 generations. That's a long time. The name originally was Mulray. It should be Mulray today, but it changed about 400 years ago. And that was uh, when there was a family, a Mulray family living here of, I think there was five boys and one girl. Mm -hmm. And on those days, there were gravestones on the graves. Mm -hmm. But the boys and the father decided to take the gravestones off, whether they were going to put it to the field or what, I don't know. But the mother and the daughter would have nothing to do with it, nothing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So they took them off. And they were all dead within a year. All the men, all the men in the family were dead within a year. The father and the sons. The father and the sons. Now, the girl that was left married a cannel from the next door farm. And what, what farm was that? Balakan Moor. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, there's only two Balakan Ends on the island, as far as I know. Mm. There's different other farms, uh, the, you know, the same name in different parishes, but there's only one Balakan Inn. Oh, uh, well, two, really. The, the, cannel, the cannel name came from the other Balakan Inn. Oh, right. But we've been here as a, in a continuous line for as we work out, is in the 1400s, in the, as far as records go, or even before that. Mm -hmm. The proper name for this is Kronker mm -hmm. The hill of the keel. Uh, yeah, the could, could be, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's, uh, I'm told there's uh, cobblestones on the floor and the cobble the white cobbles uh, there's white cobbles at the east end the altar end mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was cleaned out about 19 oh, 1910 I think thereabouts and that's when this key this stone was re reset here it had been uh, lying in a hedge further up and my grandfather said when he was a small boy it was always here so he had it put back mm -hmm. so uh, but uh, the graves, the graves all run from here. They run in rows up here. And there's a hollow, there's a hollow in the middle here. And the experts tell me that the graves were made of um, uh, stone lintels. Mm -hmm. And with using a tractor, sometimes the top it, it's caved in. It wasn't designed to take a, a tractor, you see. So, so the weight has caved it in. But when you get the grass grown properly, you can see rows of them up here. Really? Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's one row, you can see here, there's a, there's a row of graves here. And there's another one over there, and there's another one over here. And they all run in this direction. Just you know, it's, it's not a very big, it's not a very big keel, but uh, none of the keels safe. are. No, no they're not. So your father always had a lot of respect for the keel as well. Oh yes, oh there. yes, 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 definitely. Oh, you, oh, he wouldn't allow anybody to do anything to it. I mean, uh, they'd be cutting it with the old reaper and he'd be out with the man on the mower. Those days, the reaper was towed behind the tractor, the horse reaper, and uh, he'd be after the fellow because he'd, put, he'd, he'd let the blade go in and cut the sod off and they'd go back and put the sod back. You see, you know, it was, yeah. no, it was no, no, no chance of anything happening to it. The stone's been round here all my life. I don't really know what it is, but we'll have a look. We'll roll it out. We'll have a look and see. It's sandstone. And it used to be, well, when it rains, it was all getting filled up with water. And I had an uncle who stayed with us here, and he used to sharpen the carving knife. My mother, my mother would say, I'm going to sharpen the knife. And she, she'd sharpen the car. That's how there's a groove in it, Dave. He's dipping it in the water and sharpen it on the... <laughs> on the sandstone. It looks like a font, I think, maybe, from the keel. Maybe, or... maybe, maybe it connects to the keel somewhere. I don't really know, but it's been round here all my life, so mm. uh, I've got nobody left to, to ask. Because no. uh, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the oldest of the, of the generations that's around here now. My grandfather had three, four sons in the first war. He had three brothers in with him. One fellow was killed. He was another in the, uh, marine engineer. He was, he was killed at the, uh, off the Isle of Wight 
they were picking up survivors from a boat that had been torpedoed and they didn't realize it but the, the u-boat was still circling around and uh, they caught the, they got the next torpedo in the engine room and he was he, that finished him and there's another brother he was in the trenches he was he was in the Yip and the storm and all these things he told me he went out to australia afterwards and he came back he came back to the isle of man to die but he said it was too cold to die in the isle of man so he went back to australia again <laughs> But uh, he said, "How you, if you stepped off the duck boards uh, in, in, in the trenches, he said, you were a drowned man, you were up to here in the mud. He said, you know, it was desperate. And he, he got, the only injury he got was a, was, a, was a shrapnel in the wrist. And he said, yeah, he said, you remember, there's a, I got a mark there on my wrist. He said, that, that was shrapnel. You know, he said, I went to the medical orderly and he said, hold your hand out. He, said, he held his hand out and he poured the ID on it, ran in there and ran out the bottom. He said, it was a clean hole. You can imagine what it was like. My uncle, my mother's brother, mm -hmm. and he was in the first war, and he was uh, the second war. He was invalided out. He, he was uh, he was in uh, big battles. He was in the navy. He was uh, on uh, mine disposals in the first war. He was in the battle in the. Uh, the big sea battles, the, the Battle of uh, Heligoland was the Battle of Heligoland and uh, they were given the job of trying to rescue a German mine, or, or obtain a German mine so that the British Navy uh, chiefs could take it to pieces and see how it was made. Now they got this mine on board the boat, I don't know, it's off the, uh, off the east coast of England somewhere, but they got this mine on board the boat and they, they had it they had it on board and it was, he was taking the, the fuse or whatever it was. Anyway, the thing blew up and there was seven of his mates all killed and he was, why I don't know, but he, he survived and it affected him for the rest of his life that his mates were all killed. He said, you know, he was really, he really, really got to him, it really did. But uh, when he was home on holiday, on, on leave, there was a mine washed up at the point of air. Nobody knew what to do about it. And there was no Manx radio in those days. But the governor put a word out to anybody who knew what to do and he went down and he defused it on the shore at the point of air. And that's the kind of fellow he was. He wouldn't, he wouldn't think twice about his own safety. He would go and get on with the job. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a uh, uh, marine surveyor in, in his, in, after the war. And he used to go down and inspect ships. And uh, he discovered uh, a sham down in the south of England, whereby a firm, or a, I don't know what a company, just a group, group of fellas, they used to get a lot of old uh, hulks of boats, just barely passable, and they would send them out to sea with, with they would insure them well, they would send them out to sea, and they, they, they would go down and they would be picking up the insurance money. And he, he picked up this scam, and he was blowing it, to, he, was, he really was going to it. And they cut him down. They tried to kill him. He was in a car, they tried to cut the brake cables on the car. And he, he was in an open car and the car rolled over. And he tried to jump out and the car came down, it was an open car, came down across his back and he had broken back. So he was hoeing the water and he couldn't do anything. You know, when, by, that, by that time he was in, sort of a semi-invalid. My grandfather's uncle was in Peel and he was caught by the press gang. They were marching him down along the prong, along the quay to lock him up. They were probably locking him up in some other places, the underground cellars there. Uh, so his mates, some of them were in the net loft on the quay. And they shouted down to him in the ranks, hey Tom, where are you going? Oh, he said, these sods have got me, they're going to take me out to sea, they're going to lock me up. Ah, he said, why don't you throw them in the harbour? Aye, I'll do that just now, he said. So anyway, when he got to where they were going to lock him up, he set about them, he locked one in the harbour, and he broke his back because the tide was out. He laid the other fellow out and took the keys off him and opened the door where the other fellow, he'd already, he'd already had, uh, captured three or four other young fellas already locked up, so he let them out, opened the door. So he came home and he thought, well, it's no use going to stay up in the yard, he'd be a hunted man. Now this field in those days was covered in gorse and when you think about it, from here, 
you'd be able to see the, the English ship out in the bay that they were be transported away in. Yeah. So he he lived in the there must have been big big tall high gorse bushes here. He lived in the gorse for about a month. And my great grandfather was about six or seven at the time, and he actually fed him in the gorse every day. He fed him so they reckon a young fella of that size wouldn't be noticed running about the country. Mm -hmm. Now that was fine. But at one stage they did come looking for him. But he saw him coming, I don't know where he was, but he, or it was he was given somebody tipped him the wink that there was they were on the lookout for him. Anyway, this fella came after him, so what did he do? He up and he killed him. And and, and I reckon that's the stone he killed him with. What does it say? 1825. 1825, and his initials are on the back, TC. And what was his name? T Tom. Tom. Tom Cannell. Tom Cannell. That's him. I reckon that's the stone we killed him with. He killed him. And what was he going to do with the body? Well, that house wasn't built in those days. So, there was a lot of rough gorse and things down there. So we buried him. Just handy. He wasn't going to tell the nephew what he'd done with him. So he buried him. So, when they come to build the house 25 years later, that's about the right time, yeah, 25, that, that's 1825, so about 1850 they built that house. Mm -hmm. When they were building the house, in the foundation, uh, when they dug the foundation, they found a skeleton, and he had red hair in his skull. And that's the skeleton, that's the fella that he got, he knocked, he, 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 he knocked on the head down here, I reckon. And uh, anyway, they built the house on top of him. Didn't shift him, he's still there. And he's still there, even today he's still there. <laughs> the farm is in the, we've got the same field names on the fields. The names are the same as they were all those hundreds of years ago. And we use them today. And when I left school, I said to my father, wouldn't it be better to call them number one, two, and three? And he said, no, he said, I wouldn't know what you were talking about. And now I'm exactly the same. My daughter, who has taken over the farm from me, uh, has now got her head round the names and she can manage to get them pretty, pretty, pretty well spot on. The field we're in now is the woolly woo, and that's the cow's field. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it was always a handy field for the cows for the yard. Uh, I can remember all sorts of things happening in here, like the time my father said he could remember a man sowing seeds with the fiddle up here. And uh, his, grandma, his, his mother coming up with a big jug of, of custard to the man, he drunk the whole jug of custard in the gateway over there. <laughs> this field is called the Mala Close, and that one the next door is in Laddie Crink. Yeah, and the, what, the big long one you see down by the shore, that was three fields, Taltray, Langesh and Tronnery. Now, uh, I believe one of them means red sand, which is fair enough, there is a sandy piece in the middle. I don't really know what the others, there's a, Langesh would be, would be near the, the there's a uh, Glenthur there, the, that inlet there is Glenthur. Uh, it could be near that, I don't know. You got the one behind the yard. There's the there's the night, and then you got the woolly woos, two woolly woos, and then you've got uh, the bell of bully brain, the lag, Cronamana, Cross the road. You've got the bully uh, the bully garble, which is the horses field. The next is the dulcia mark, which is the hare's gap. The next is uh, the the uh, mulya legic. No, mulya legic. Uh, there's two mulya legics, and that I believe means in a day. And in those days. There was a house out there at one time a day. In those days, in the days before the local government board and the rest of them, if you could build a house in a field in a day and be living in it for night, nobody could stop you building a house in their field. Really? Yep. Yep. I don't think that would hold water today, though. <laughs> This was the old... Well, you see, it was a cow house coming down here, and it was taken down to build this Dutch barn. Mm -hmm. It was a Dutch barn with a curved roof on it. Anyway, we've re-roofed it a couple of times since then. Mm -hmm. uh, the windy spot up here, and it gets, uh, yeah, you know, it cop, cops it. So your father put the stones... Yeah, he put the stones there when they, when they, when they altered, the, when they altered the, the, the shape of the yard, shall we say. Mm -hmm. 
You thought they were too important to be yes, lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, we're not going to throw them away. No. There's a stone here in the corner. And he, he's put his name in it. I don't know if it's still legible or not. Your father did? Yeah. Have you got yours in any? No, I haven't got any. <laughs> I, I used to put it in a tree, but the tree is bad to grow out. This one here, now, it went on fire. Anyway, my grandmother was at home with, I don't know who, but anyway, uh, she was just a week or two from expecting a baby. And she came down here and loosed all the cattle out. There must have been, it was in April time, I'm told. Uh, and she loosed the cattle out so they wouldn't be burnt alive, you see. She, she came down the cattle thing, burned above her head, and she went down here, big pregnant woman dead down in, in, in the middle of the cattle. So I don't know whether she was brave or whether she was stupid, but I mean, the cattle were a lot of money in those days. Well, they were worth, they were worth a lot. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, she, she came down and did that, but they, they re, I wish they'd have built a few more roofs off because it was a wonderful roof on those timbers like that, didn't it? It's wonderful timbers put in it. So, uh, but uh, there was a few charred beams still around about the place up till fairly recently, mm -hmm. you know. This is the old stable. And the doorway is worn, and the lintel of the doorway is worn with the horses' homes in the back of the, the, the we used to stick up past the collar. And the, the horse would be ducking his head to go in here and scrape on the top. So they must have been walking exactly the same spot every day because, I mean, you know, the, 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 the grooves are just there. But this is only built with uh, uh, mud mortar. The walls are only, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not well built, but, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's holding together. So it'd be about the same age as the main farmhouse. Yes, the old yes, farmhouse. yeah, yes, yes. I you would think know. so. You don't I could. No, well, all I can say is, this house, there's a house in Michael, which was the first slate-roofed house in the parish. And the one, the other Balkan end was the next, and this was the next. So it's the third slate-roofed house in the parish. So, you know, the one in the village is, I don't know, 17 something or other, and this would be about it'd be the 1700s sometime. Well, Burke used to belong to my, it was belonging to my uncle. And the way it came into the family was my grandfather, he never owned it, but he went to the sale. It was, it was for sale due to a, a, a coroner's auction, I think. But anyway, it never made the, it never made the, uh, the required price. Because he talked, he was speaking to somebody, a neighbor the next day, and he said, how much did Burke make? Oh, he said it wasn't sold. He said they didn't make enough, didn't bid, it wasn't bid enough. So he said, no. So he went home and he said to his wife, Burke wasn't sold. She said, why did you go and buy it? He said, she said, I've got some money, I have some of mine, and uh, you've got some. So, so off he goes to Douglas. And uh, he bought it from the lawyers. So as he was coming down the steps, who was coming up the steps but the man from Balagon who was planned on doing exactly the same. Well, it sort of got up his nose a bit, didn't it? He wouldn't speak to him afterwards. So anyway, that was fine. So about a week or 10 days later, he, the bank, which is Dumble's bank, when he had his money, it went bankrupt. And he would have lost a lot. It was only just about a week or 10 days. He was on the right, side, the right side. So he was so very, very lucky. He, he told any amount of people at the time. He just took the money out in time. Because the bank, Dumbo's bank going bust, uh, cleaned out a lot of people in the island at that time. Mm -hmm. So he was just so lucky. He got it by the skin of his teeth, you might say. Mm -hmm. But he farmed Burke from here for years when, he, when, when uh, my father and his brothers were, were young. They used to, I heard my father saying how they used to be walking the horses from here down to Burke. And how if you were in good time in the morning, you would see the train coming up, the seven o'clock train, you'd be on the road down here with the horse going to Burke, and the seven o'clock train would be coming up. So they had to, had to get up before their breakfast in those days. <laughs> so you didn't live at Burke? No, no. Because no, my uncle built the house on Burke. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, there's a tree in the middle of Burke Yard, I think it's still there today. That was apparently in the centre of the old house that was there. There was an old house there that they levelled. 
and uh, uh, that was that, that was when when it was uh, uh, when horses were used all the time. That tree in the middle of the yard is where they used to tie the horses to when they were breaking the horse in. They used mm. to tie the horse to the tree. So I know the tree is still there. So that could tell you a few yarns too, but I don't know very much about that like I do around here. Mm -hmm. Well, Years ago, the road used to come round around the far side. There was a very sharp, sharp bend at the top. My grandfather had this dug out, and he couldn't dig it out. He didn't have any diggers, so he blew it out with gunpowder. And my father could still remember a battle on the loft with still some gunpowder in the bottom when he was a nipper. But uh, it was, it was, it was, um, I suppose he wouldn't have dynamite in those days either, but the gunpowder they used, and that's what they blew it out. They, 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 they made a nice curve in the road coming down here because this was, there was a lot of traffic used to come down from the back. I mean, originally this was the road before the bottom road was ever made. But the, the high road in the bottom was only made about four or five hundred years ago. Right. You know, the one at the yeah. bottom. That was on, that's only a fairly new road compared to things around Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in, in Balakan End terms. <laughs> yeah, but uh, a lot of traffic would be coming down here and there was an awful sharp bend there. It would be a terrible thing to get stuck down as you get a, a traffic down cars and carts and, and anything, everything had to be carted down, so, you know, it was a very big improvement getting this done. So what was this building originally? I would think it would be a cow house of some description, or a cat a house to keep young stock in, but they were, the old boys were very keen on having uh, several small sheds around the place where they would keep maybe six or eight cattle or maybe maybe more but not not too many more because if they got a disease and it went through the shed it wouldn't take the whole herd you see yeah. so you might uh, in those days i mean the winter time they wouldn't be fattened cattle in the winter they were just trying to survive in the winter because originally they would be bringing they would be even crushing gorse for them Really? Yeah, yeah, there's just, just gorse mills about the place. I don't know where you'll find one, but there's gorse mills about to, to chop it all up. That, uh, especially for the horses. I don't know so much about the cattle, but especially for the horses. But uh, anything green would be uh, sort of brought in to, to, to try and make the cattle survive the winter. Because yeah. uh, it was a case of survival, survival of the fittest. Yeah. So that is why there was, there was another couple of sheds further up here, and I think that's what it's, that's what it's all been, been that's about. That's why they're quite small, and they yeah. were obviously thatched, were they? Yes, that was the, there's a whole row of stones sticking out. There's one there now, mm -hmm. but it was all... Uh, my father had that uh, roofed years ago. And is that a boat on the door? Yes, that, that, that's one of the old nickies. I would say some of the, the um, fishermen who were living here in the winter would be doing that in their spare time, on a wet day perhaps, mm. whether it was spare time or not, but they would, that would be there, whether they were feeling uh, the pull of the sea when they were here or not, I don't know, but uh, um, they would be well, well used to making the, 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 the drawing almost just right, because mm. they would do it, they'd be used to that all, all summer. They'd be all over the Irish Sea in the summertime, and then in the wintertime, they would come to the farm, they would get somewhere to live, somewhere to sleep, and maybe only the loft they were sleeping in, but at least it'd be dry yeah. and it'd be warm. And uh, uh, they would have to uh, do manual jobs on the farm. I think they were mostly uh, employed on building the hedges around about. That's yeah. how the hedges got built. That carving's got a bit of age on it. Oh, yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, well, it's only preserved in there because it's been sheltered. That door is, is sheltered. Well, this, this chapel used to be well attended on anniversaries and harvest home services. And I can remember being up here when I was a small boy to help my aunt, who was in charge of the, looking after it, uh, help to decorate it for, um, I think it must have been uh, the anniversary. Anyway, I had a tall, tall bottle 
I think it was a salad cream bottle, and I was putting flowers in it, and there was water in the bottle, and it fell over. My aunt said to me, did you know what to do? Did you know what to do? I said, what do you mean? You know, you put some stones in the road, you should get some stones, put them in the bottom of it to keep it right way up. <laughs> she told off. Oh, but she would go on, she would go around the neighbours, and she went to the neighbour down here, and he said, he said, he, she said to him, are you coming to the anniversary on Sunday? No, I'm, I'm Church of England, he said. Oh, yeah, I'm church, or we're church, she said. Aye, ah, right, she said. You just be there anyway. <laughs> you just make sure you're there. So he had to come. Uh, my aunt was always, it was a harmonium here, and she used to play the harmonium. She was, she was, she was chief, chief, chief beadle up here. She was, she was, she kept everybody to the hand. But after she died, uh, there was very few people going to the chapel. And, uh, Peaches used to come from Peel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can remember it was always my job to uh, help the, the preachers to turn their big cars out here. And I was most uh, uh, cheesed off one day because H.K. Collins, he was the speaker of the House of Keys. He was a little man and he had a great big car. And I had a lot of tacking to get him turned. And I got him turned and he never even offered me a ride down to the house. I thought I, I, he went down in my estimation very, very quickly that day, I tell you. It was a bit of a miserable sort of day, and I thought, well, he's a miserable sod. He could have given me a lift down to the house. Absolutely. Yeah. So this was closed in 63, was it? Or ah, about that, yes, yes. 60, yeah, around about then, yeah. So who was going to the chapel? Just the people around about, just the farms around about. Uh, the, 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 the route to the chapel, the proper road to the chapel, was just across the fields. Mm -hmm. There's no actual road up our road. I mean, it, 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 Busy times like Harvest Home and uh, anniversaries, yes, people used to come up here and park alongside in the field alongside and such like. But uh, normally uh, it wasn't, it was just the people across the fields. And mm -hmm. there was, you know, there was a Sunday school and all here in, in my father's time. And two Sundays, two, two Sundays, two services, one in the afternoon and one at night. And, and one of the, the Sunday school was in the morning. So it must have been a busy space at one time. The, the, the preachers all came from Peel. It was in the Peel circuit. This was the last, this was the, the, the northern end of the Peel circuit. So we say we went down to Ballalay and that was the northern circuit, you see. So, But all the other chapels around the used to close when it was a special service here. And this used to close when it was special service somewhere else, you see. That's, that's the way it worked. But I learned to light fires here because it was my job when I was in Nipper to come up and light the fire on a Sunday afternoon so there'd be some heat in it for Sunday night. So that was the fire. That was the fireplace was there. Yeah. Just yeah. an open fire. Yeah. 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 We're a bit lost when it gets back to 500 years. I mean, uh, you know, the ink is getting a bit faded on the paper. Uh, 500 years and still going. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I've got uh, four young grandsons coming along the line further back so that uh, we might have uh, more uh, farmers in Bellican in, in the future. We certainly hope so. Because uh, when, when the youngest son of my eldest daughter was, was uh, being christened, I gave a little talk, a little speech, and I said I wished him luck. And if he goes farming, I hope all the sheep would have two lambs and all his cows would have lots of milk and his calves would do well. And that still goes today. The best that you could wish for. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>